everybody. So today is our next day for a uh, family movie night. And uh, I'm actually not sure if I'm gonna end up posting this on Sunday or on Monday, depending on how busy I get and when I can edit. But anyway, it's for this week. It's our last entry in Muppet May. And I hope you've enjoyed it. We're talking about the 2011 The Muppets. Uh, it was the reboot of The Muppets. They haven't been in a movie for a little while. And uh, it's a really interesting film because, you know, there's a lot of films that lean on nostalgia very heavily, um, but do it in kind of a, a patronizing way, a frustrating way, a way that isn't satisfying. And I think that this film is an example of a movie that leans, that does, the, that does it the right way, that leans on nostalgia a lot, but does it in the right way. I think if you don't have a ton of nostalgia, for these characters and for this world. I, I don't think you'll really like this movie all that much, actually. Uh, it's, I think you'll find it a little bit boring, but if you do have sort of an attachment to these characters, seeing them kind of brought back together will feel really satisfying for you and will be uh, pleasing for you. And so it's a pretty simple movie, but I, I think it, like I said, I, I think it kind of, knows what it's doing and it has a lot of winking charm to that uh you know that fourth wall kind of thing um and it starts out it's about uh a two brothers and you have uh, jason siegel's character uh walter and gary and walter is a muppet and gary obviously is jason siegel so he's not a muppet they never really explain why they're different like if one's adopted or what they just don't they're just brothers and uh, but they are, you know, really, really different, but they love each other so much. And Walter grew up in, in, uh, idolizing the Muppet Show. And that's what they had kind of helped him get through bullying and getting teased because he looked different and everything like that. And it was kind of the thing that the two brothers shared as they grew up. Three is now dating uh, a girl named Mary, who is played by Amy Adams. And, uh, and, and they want to get out of a small town, California, which is actually the name of the town. And so they decide to, they're going to go for this anniversary. They've been da uh, dating for 10 years, I think, this anniversary uh, trip. And uh, Walter asks if he can come along uh, so that he can go to Muppet's studio. And even though Mary really wants to spend the time with, uh, with Gary, uh, she d relents and decides to let uh, let them uh, let him come along, let Walter come along, and uh, so you get the introduction to uh, to the characters in the song "Life's a Happy Song," which is a really fun song, and uh, the songs were written by uh, Brett McKenzie, who. I uh, had worked on Flight of the, of the Concords. And uh, so that, that was really fun. And one of them ended up earning an Academy Award, which is pretty crazy. And the score is by Christoph Beck, who did Frozen. So it has a pretty uh, all-star <laughs> music cast. And, and uh, it's a lot of fun, this opening number of Life's a Happy Song. Everything is great. Everything is grand. I got the whole like a rose with someone to paint someone to pose life's a piece of cake with someone to pedal someone to break end up going on their uh on their trip and they get to muppet studio and they find out that it is dilapidated alan arkin is there and uh, he gives them this tour which is just like really not a tour at all and it's it's there are a lot of cameos which is also part of the nostalgia of this movie because that was always a part of the Muppets is tons of cameos throughout and uh, so they find out that this evil oil baron and it, like I said it's very aware of like the fourth wall breaking and sort of the humor of it all they uh, have Chris Cooper playing Tex Richmond who is the greedy oil oil magnet who wants to destroy the Muppet studio and uh and get oil that's supposedly underneath the studio 
so <laughs> and he also hates the Muppets. He had some like issue with them on his 10th birthday. So he hates the Muppets and he sings, uh, his song is called uh, Let's Talk About Me that he sings where he raps, which is pretty funny for like a, an actor of the caliber of Chris Cooper. Oh, I make the baker bake my bread out of dough. No, no, don't eat it though. It'll make you ill. There ain't no flour in the hundred dollar bill. He's Tex Rich Man. Oh, yeah. Everybody listen. Here we go now. Just how great it is to be here. Oh, it's great to be me. We have to go around and kind of collect all of the various Muppet characters from where they are, which is, again, very nostalgic to this type of you know reuniting the band kind of movie they have lots of little fourth wall jokes like uh when uh when they're talking about uh different ways they can solve the problem and it, mary says well this is going to be a very short movie <laughs> things like that are pretty funny and uh, they even uh, get to a point where they have to go to paris to get piggy and uh, they're like, well, how are we going to get there in this car? And they're like, we'll use maps, map transport. And, uh, you know, in movies, they always just show, like, the slot, 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 slot on the map. And so that's kind of funny. And they're in Los Angeles. And uh, you have Mary feeling kind of frustrated because, uh, because uh, Gary doesn't care about their date and their anniversary. And so she sings Me Party, which was a lot of fun. I'm having a me party, a party by myself. A me party, I don't need nobody else. A me party, I'm the first and last to show. There's no one at this party that I don't already know. At, at, uh, at them, they end up kidnapping Jack Black and because they need a host uh, in order to have the, uh, um, in order to have the telethon to raise money uh and uh he, he's pretty pretty funny you know they have him like bound and everything to to do it uh once the show starts you get the int the old school nostalgic introduction to the muppet show which was really fun <laughs> numbers and you get uh, Kermit and the whole gang singing Rainbow, Rainbow Connection which again is very very nostalgic and fun to see and uh, yeah and then basically it just kind of goes back and forth back and forth uh, Mary finally says I'm leaving you because you care more about the Muppets than you do about me and that's when Jason Siegel sings Man or Muppet and this was the Academy Award nominated song an Academy Award winning song. Am I a man or am I a Muppet? Am I a Muppet? If I'm a Muppet, then I'm a very manly Muppet. Very manly Muppet. Am I a Muppet? Or am I a man? Am I a man? And, and also you have this thread going through it of Walter feeling like he doesn't have any talents, he's not good for anything, and then he figures out that he can whistle. And then that's his talent. And that's what he can add to the Muppets. And of course they end up uh, winning back their studio and getting back their show and everything's great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a really, really sweet, fun movie that's very, very leans heavily on nostalgia. If you're not a big Muppets fan, you're not going to like this movie and you're going to think it's kind of boring, I think. Uh, but for me, I really enjoyed it and I thought it was very, very sweet. It's not my favorite uh, Muppets movie. I definitely like it better than Muppets Most Wanted, which to me just relied way too much on the humans and not enough on the Muppets. Uh, and I'm not a big Tina Fey fan. So, but I, I really, I really think this one is a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, I, my personal favorite Muppet movies are the Muppet movies that are based on books and stories. Uh, and, and of course the original Muppet movie, but this brings back a lot of that nostalgia. So anyway, what do you think about the Muppets? Where does it rank for you as far as the Muppet films? Let me know in the comments section and thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye.